update. And here we are now on Thursday, and we're at the 18th of August, 2022, 8.25 a.m. Central Time. So, quiet day. We get a lot of news today. We had the unemployment claims, the Philly Fed numbers. I'll show you all that in a minute. Inflation still roaring in Europe. Hasn't backed off at all, unfortunately and looks to get worse. And then we have to deal with yesterday's Fed meeting, minutes. And in those minutes, everybody's taking different tacks. I, I don't understand this. Simply put, the Fed can't continue with 75 basis hikes indefinitely. We know that, they know that. So the question is, at what point do they back off of that, go to 50s or 25s, and for how long? That's what they said. For some reason, people took that as dovish. Nonsense. You can't break the economy, that's not the goal. You want to tame inflation in, and you want to keep employment at a good, stout number. Why? That cushions the slowdown in the economy. People have more money to spend. In the grain markets, down. Now, you know, every morning you wake up, there's another piece of news about weather, uh, Ukraine grain shipments. 24 ships, as of yesterday, have in total left Ukraine with permission by the UN looking over with Russia, the United States, and made its way to different ports and delivering of grain. This is good news. It weighs on the wheat market because Ukraine's a major wheat export. When you look at the bonds and notes, the 210 year narrowed into about 40, the market after those minutes trying to figure out what's the next move by the Fed. I get that. When we take a look at the metal markets, if you start talking that the Fed's going to eventually, which it will, have to taper back on these rate hikes, well, that's a headwind you start removing from some of the metals. I'm impressed in copper. This is a big range for copper today. 354 to 364.90, it's rejecting something on the downside. I think it's betting hard that China is going to have to do a major amount of stimulus in the housing industry and other parts of their economy, and that's what you're looking at, I think, right there. As for the dollar, you're up about 25 points today. Most of the currency's down. The peso's trying to be up. I'm talking Mexican peso trying to rally. And in the energy market, well, now there's another twist going on. Russia has told another one of the, uh, the pipelines, hey, we want to be paid uh, outside of this U.S. problem. You got to pay Gazprom directly. That's creating a new problem, especially for some of this energy that uh, is in the central parts of Europe. They'll have to work their way around it. Another thing to keep your eye on, Australia. I don't know if people realize that a fifth of the world's natural gas exports come from Australia. And Australia at home is starting to feel the pinch of rising prices. The authorities there might say, you know, we can't keep exporting that much. We got to tame our price at home. That will import, ideally, Asia markets at first, but it comes home to roost to a degree too. So be sure you pay attention to all that. So let's go, if we could, to some of the news of the day. And here we go. Weekly jobless claims down 2,000 to 250,000. I think that's the first time in three or four weeks we're getting a decline. I don't like that the uh, continuing claims went back up. It's not an alarming number, but I'd like to see it just falling away. The Philly Fed business activity, they expected a negative five. They got a big reversal here. That's a surprise. Things are picking up, obviously, there. The employment index, though, if you take a look, prior was 19.4. They're still picking up on the employment. The new orders index, as I look at it, it's still negative. In other words, it was a negative 24.8. It's not quite as negative, but it's not picking up at all. Shipments index soaring. Things are going out and inventories are building. Conference board at 9 o'clock is going to come out with their uh, leading lagging and coincident indicators. Existing home sales come out at nine o'clock as well. They look for 4.8 million units annualized. I was watching last night as my uh, nephew put in a bid on a place in Washington, D.C. Got it overnight, Very, and it was a good bid. One that the, the seller can't counter, so it was right where it should be. 
Energy analysts forecasting the weekly natural gas storage to come in at 35 billion cubic feet, and that's a low number, so we'll see what happens there. And the EU Stats Bureau reported European inflation during July was up 8.9% from July 2021. Of course, it's going to be energy, then food costs, so you've got to pay attention to all that because it is very important. Now, some of the things I want you to be aware of, you know, not all of you are suited to be directly trading your account. You need input. We have brokers that have tremendous experience, 20 years plus, each one. Not collectively, each one. They work with you, they call you daily or you call them, it goes both ways, giving trading ideas, letting it go. They don't want to take authority on your account. We re re really don't do managed accounts in our company. You're gonna be in control. But it's the input. Who's your eyes and ears in the market? A lot of people need this, you know. I watch people open up their accounts, they're self-directed. Some have no idea at all what the heck they're doing. And not my job to say you should do this, you shouldn't do that. That's up to them. If they think they can do it, who am I to say you can't? But what do I say? Work with the broker first, get a feel, get your weight through it, see what you need, and you take it from there. The commissions are not exorbitant, period. How do you find out more? The ideal way is just give my our staff a call, 866-973-2077. They'll be happy to work with you. I'm I Rapstein. I'll see you at the end of the day with our market reviews. Good trading to you.